Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to talk about archery and the item progression for that. If you haven't already, check out the close combat and the mage versions of this. Uh, I'm going to be going over a couple of other weapon skill sets as well, but today's archery. So let's get down to it. To start out with the early and mid game, as far as archery is concerned, it doesn't actually matter what bow you use. There's a very clear line in the sand. There's all of the bows that you will get up to a certain point, and then there's just all the bows with piercing. And the bows with piercing are going to be vastly superior. Let's go over some options as for like your early and mid game bows. There's Andrus's bow, which you get from a side quest called Andrus's Past. Uh, you get that while you're doing the alchemy storyline. There's the Guardian Bow, that's Elves only. Uh, you can also use the Elven Longbow. Wingbow is also an option. This one has a farther range and a faster speed than the other bows, so it has a bit of a different feel to it. And then you have the Leather Longbow, which was pretty popular before the Spirit update. And then you have the Highlander Longbow. But then we finally get into the the next tier up. So you have all of those bows are kind of in their own class of like early to mid game. Once you reach mid game, this is going to be the bow that you're going to look for. It is going to be the Black Dragon's Knight bow. Uh, so there's there's one other bow I want to mention here at this point, and that's the Demonic Infinite bow. If you've mastered archery, then you can equip the Demonic Infinite bow. Is it worth it? Not really. It doesn't have piercing, it's going to be completely outclassed. Even with all of the upgrades, it's going to be outdamaged by the Black Dragon Knight's Bow. So you want to aim to get yourself one of these pretty early on. You can equip this at any point in your progression. So if you can get a hold of these at level 1, when you just start, if you're interested in archery, this is going to be the bow you want to shoot for. I suggest this for beginners all the way up. But in the mid-game, you should definitely at least have the Black Dragon Knight's Bow. And the next step up from the Black Dragon Knight's Bow is going to be the Salvation Bow. You're going to lose some max damage on this trade up, but what you're going to gain is the ability to special upgrade. So if you started with the Black Dragon Knight's Bow, in mid game you can look to upgrade to the Salvation Bow. If you're comfortable with the Black Dragon Knight Bow, you can wait and go for the next option I'm going to talk about. But this one's a good stop along your journey, and this is where a lot of people can end their journey as well. Salvation Bow is the highest tier bow most players will get to. Moving up from here is going to be the Baffle Hunter. The bow by itself is not good enough to outclass the Salvation Bow. In fact, the Salvation Bow on paper is better than the Baffle Hunter in just base stats, aside from the Baffle Hunter having an additional point of piercing. That is, until you include the Baffle Huntress. If you have both the Baffle Hunter and the Baffle Huntress, this is going to outclass the Salvation Bow by far because it adds 30 max damage and then increases the damage after that by 15%. So when once your damage is applied, it adds an additional 15% damage. And that's just the best bow in the game. So th this is the bow that all the end game players are going to play with if they use the bow at all. And I mentioned that because we also have crossbows in the mix. As far as crossbows go, you've got this long list of crossbows in the game, but I'm not going to go over any of these because all of them are very, very similar in the same situation that the bows are in. Most of them only have one level of piercing, and there's only two crossbows that stand out on this list at all, and that is going to be the Celtic Royal crossbow and the Divine crossbow. So you can use whatever crossbow you want, whatever one looks the best for you, whatever feels best for you, whatever you can get your hands on. It's all going to be about the same until you're able to upgrade. The easier of the two to get is going to be the Celtic Royal crossbow. The Divine crossbow is going to take some time to get. So let's go over that for a minute. On paper, uh, this is similar to the situation with the Baffle Hunter and the Salvation Bow, where the Salvation Bow is better on paper. The Celtic Royal Crossbow is better on paper than the Divine Crossbow. Unless you have the Novel Enchant. The Novel Prefix for the Divine Crossbow makes up for what the Divine Crossbow lacks, adding an additional up to 3 piercing, giving it a total of 5, and that's not including the one that you get from upgrades. Down here with the key and finish. So you can really beef up the power of this Divine Crossbow to far surpass the Celtic Royal Crossbow in the endgame. Uh, this will be the best crossbow you can get. And 
if I were to list them in order of power, right, it would be the Divine Crossbow with Novel Enchant at the top. Second place would be Baffle Hunter with the Huntress. And it's going to be very, very close between that and the Celtic Royal Crossbow, right? Celtic Royal Crossbow can have very similar stats to the Baffle Hunter, even with the Huntress equipped. And in addition to that, it has additional piercing that the Baffle Hunter does not have. So it's going to be very, very close between the two. And then below that is going to be the Salvation Bow. And below that is going to be the Baffle Hunter without the Huntress. So now we're going to move on to Enchants. Uh, starting out, there's the Goddesses prefix, which you get as a completion reward for Generation 1. It gives 8 max damage, but this one we can move past pretty quickly because the 10 times repair fee just isn't going to cut it. Next step up is going to be the Engineer's Enchant. I say this because it gives bonus stamina. So if you have Hill and Engineering ranked up, you're going to get both dexterity and stamina, so it'll help with your magnum spam, and it's going to decrease your repair cost, which can be important for some players. So this is a good stepping stone on your way up the ladder. Going on to the next one, we have the Oblivion Enchant. It's better than Goddesses because it doesn't have the repair fee and has additional max damage. It's just overall solid. Another option for this is going to be the Lion Hunter's Enchant. It's a prefix rank A that drops from a mid-game dungeon. It's easily obtainable and doesn't require any stepping, it's not going to break your weapon, and it's going to have a pretty high success rate. And I think you can get a lot of mileage out of this enchant. Next up from there is going to be Glorious. This one's going to be a little bit hard to find. It gives 11 max damage. It's a prefix rank 8, so you will need to step up from rank 9, uh, and that's part of the use of Engineer's enchant that I suggested earlier. The next enchant is going to be the Death Arrow enchant. This one's for crossbows only, so you can't use it for your bows. It gives 10 max damage. The next enchant is for those who like to gamble. This is a rank 5 prefix. This one's pretty common. You can get it from weapons and in a lot of different shadow missions. It gives 10 max damage, so it's no worse or better than the Lion Hunter's enchant. The downside is the plus 15% repair cost, but the upside is if you can succeed this one, you can then step up into the next bracket of enchants. Specifically for the Salvation Bow, there is a unique enchantment. It gives up to 12 max damage with an additional 5 if you have Judgment Blade ranked up. It decreases the repair cost and gives Dexterity. This is a very, very solid enchant. It's going to be very hard to find something better than this, as common as this. So if you have the Salvation Bow, this is a great option for you. I feel like I should mention the Brainstorm enchant here while we're talking about prefixes. This is enabled regardless of rank. It's rank 8 and gives 8 to 17 max damage. The only difficulty in, in obtaining this is that it's no longer available. So if you find it on the market, this is a good option. But if you can't find it, I would just skip this one entirely. And then, of course, we can't go without mentioning Robin Hood prefix. It's a rank 1 prefix, which means it's going to have about 10% success rate with the Divine Powder. Not good chances on this one. But it does give 10 to 14 max damage. It adds to your dexterity and crit if you have all these Dan ranks. The super downside is the times 10 repair fee. Moving on from there, we're going to go to suffixes. So here's a couple of suffixes that I think are going to be useful. This suffix enchant is going to be similar to the goddesses enchant that I mentioned earlier, where it's a quest reward that all players will have eventually. This one just gives 10 max damage and 10 critical, but it also has a 10 times repair fee, so watch out for that one. The next enchant is going to be the Wanderer enchant. This one gives 10 to 15 max damage when your level is over 30. It's a suffix for bows and crossbows. You will need to step up to this one. We'll talk about that later. The next enchant is going to be Thorn Lotus. This is definitely a step up from the last one, as it gives plus 12 max damage right off the bat. The only major downside is that it's is a rank 5 suffix, which means you'll have to find and succeed a suffix that's rank 6 or higher in order to put this on your weapon. The next enchant is going to be Sniping. It's going to be a little bit better than Thorn Lotus for you, as the max damage that it gives is higher. Uh, it can give up to 20 max damage, which is better than what Thorn Lotus was offering at 12. And it's also a lower grade enchant, so you don't have to worry about breaking your weapon for it. This one also drops from Alvin Knight Training, but there's a few other places you can find it as well. There's going to be another rank 5 suffix for bows and crossbows. This is going to be the Palm Tree enchant. Uh, I currently use this on my Salvation Bow. It gives a total of 12 max damage, so it's going to be very similar to Thorn Lotus. At this point, I thought it was important to mention enchant sequencing. The previous two guides on Mage and Close Combat had mostly enchants that were enabled for any rank. 
or didn't exceed rank 9. In order to apply a rank 9 enchant, you have to have a rank A enchant or higher on the weapon previously. That applies for anything above rank 9 as well. So if you have a rank 1 enchant that isn't enabled for any rank, then you're going to have to have a rank 2 enchant on that weapon or higher in order to enchant a rank 1 enchant on it. And here on the wiki page, link in the description below, you can see all the enchants that will help you rank up your enchanting game. And this is useful beyond just archery, uh, but I feel like this is the first time I've had to mention it for people who may not be aware of how Enchant works. Thanks for watching and have a great day.